are richer than Galapagos Islands multiplied tenfold. But look at that economic mindset of extraction and consumption. In 1900, this is how our country looked like. Practically 99% was covered with forest. Then the Americans came and taught us the meaning of GDP, gross domestic, gross a great disaster for the planet. And look what happened. And you call that progress? So, as, I, as uh, Flor said, I am only a storyteller. Nobody would listen to me. I was a very young lawyer. I was jobless. Who would listen to me? But there were only less than 1 million hectares of forest left, and we were cutting them down at the rate of 120,000 hectares per year. So you don't need rocket science to understand that in a matter of seven years, there's not going to be any forest left in the country. So children acting on behalf of themselves and on behalf of future generation wanted to tell the story in a court of law and file the case to stop all lagging in the Philippines. The question is, do these children have legal personality to sue, especially if they are representing themselves and future generations? Well, I lost in the trial court. I you know, was struggling on my own, eventually ended up in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court was kind enough to understand that we have a responsibility to future generations. And well, on the legal question of whether the children have the personality to sue, the Supreme Court said that the legal personality to sue the children is based, can be based on the concept of intergenerational responsibility. And this is now stated in the Constitution because unless it is written in the Constitution itself, may I ask everyone to please read this aloud to yourselves. The day would not be too far when all else would be lost, not only for this generation, but also for succeeding generations. Generations which stand to inherit nothing but a parched earth incapable of sustaining life. That, my friends, was 30 years ago. It was becoming true then. Now it is even more true. Eventually, the Secretary of the Department of Environment stopped that logging in the Virgin Forest at least. And then a few years ago, the Several years ago, all logging was stopped in the Philippines. It took 20, it took one generation to make that happen. So let me tell you another story, the story of the sea. And you would like this because you see your pictures there. You see the pictures of your country. As you know, we are part of the marine triangle, the coral triangle, the richest marine waters on earth. And we are even known as the Indo-Malay Indo -Malay Philippine Archipelago, the center of marine biodiversity on Earth. You look at that. But then further studies showed that the Philippines was actually the center of the center of marine biodiversity on Earth. And that's not a Filipino topic. That's Ken Carpenter. And look at the top of that red part, the central Philippines. That's called, they call it the central Philippines. The top of that red part is Manila Bay. But what we did do, what did we do to the Manila Bay? We dumped, we were dumping 16 million liters of raw and untreated sewage every day into Manila Bay. Is that how we treat the gifts that the great spirit has given us? We turn it into a toilet bowl? So it was time to tell another story. This story took 10 years to happen. Finally, the Supreme Court, from the trial court to the Court of Appeals, all the way to the Supreme Court, without even any moral support, much less any financial support. I do not seek, neither do accept any funding. After 10 years, the Supreme Court said, clean up Manila Bay. That was 2008. 20 years hence, it became much worse. And I'm ready to give up. And then I see this that they're actually seriously, seriously cleaning up Manila Bay. What is the lesson? In all those battles, the lesson is that anything that is worth doing cannot be done in one lifetime. But perhaps in this lifetime, we can plant seeds, seeds of hope. And probably that is what Nicanor Reyes envisioned when he founded the 
Far Eastern University decades ago. He just planted the seed of hope. My friends, let me tell you another story. After all the wounds of war and bruises of battle that I have faced to protect the land, air, and water of life, I have realized that there is a new pathway. One, fighting is not the answer. And two, is that we will have peace on earth when we have peace with the earth. And this is the new pathway. Instead of me talking, can I show you a film?
So my friends, the message is we will change the story of the world when we simply change the storyline of what's happening here. Up here now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, authority. You, you yeah, can okay. hear you clearly. Yes. Yeah. Freeze nothing. There. There. Yeah. Changing from bad to good and from sad to happy and from dark to light, my friends, that is our bridge to the new normal, to a better and brighter world. And how? Law and science. Many of you are scientists. Some of us are lawyers. We try to change the mind. But when you change the mind, you can change tomorrow. When you change the heart, it is forever. Slide, slide. So. There. The greatest hunger of the human heart is not the hunger for food. It is the hunger of the human heart for approval and appreciation. And as a wise man once said, an Asian wise man once said, that the seeds of goodness live in the soil of appreciation for goodness. That is, my friends, the message that I wish to convey to you. One, we will have peace on earth when we have peace with the earth. We will search for good stories of people making peace with the earth. We've heard of good stories. So we must hear more of them and gift them with kind words. And in different categories, I will share with you the concept note of this. Take home messages, my friends. One, we will change the story of the world when we change the storyline. And we will transform doom to boom and from gloom to boom. And kind words have the power to change the destiny of the world. We recently put up this little website only last Saturday. It's still, it's still pretty dirty. I, I'm not a techie. Uh, so you can visit. And those of you who would like to volunteer to help search for good stories and write draft nice letters to good people, you are most welcome. If you maybe. It is not just Far Eastern University. Having heard the vision of the great Nicanor Reyes, I think it may also mean for the earth, a school for the earth and for you. You are a lighthouse of hope because you will train generations to take better care of the land, air, and water of life. My only injunction I have been teaching for the last 35 years or so, my only injunction, my only advice, my young friends, is do not study with your mind. In fact, do not study too hard. Study with your heart and have fun. No one is calling you to solve the problems of the world. Just enjoy the journey. And as a little gift to you, my friends in the FEU, I recently gave the commencement address to the newly uh, established Jindal School of Environment and Sustainability. Perhaps uh, you can link up with them and begin a new course or a new field of study called CPR economics. Other people call it natural capitalism, green economics, sustainable development, etc., etc., ecological economics. I like to call it CPR economics because the term itself defines what we need to do. We need to care, we need to protect, and we need to restore. And the Jindal School is in the homeland of this great wise man of Asia and a living legend, my dear brother, my spirit brother, MC Meta, and the vice dean, the associate dean of the School of Environment now is his only child, his only, uh, his only child, his only daughter. He recently did, his, did her PhD. My friends, both of thanks to Flor for inviting me, to the Montinola family, and to established with the Nicanor Reyes, to Gianna, I know Guiana, she is a lawyer too. And to my brothers and sisters in the ASEAN, we are all family. In fact, you will see how 
much of a family we will be shortly. As another gift, my friends, I am giving the school and all your networks, all your former alumni and uh, former students, uh, alumni and all your friends, including our friends in Indonesia and Malaysia, I am giving you a copy of that book entitled Shooting Stars and Dancing Fish, A Walk to the World We Want. I am giving it to you gratis at Amore. Of course, I cannot give you the hard copy, but the electronic copy is there with you and you can spread it around as widely as possible, as widely as you wish. It's, a, it's not a book, it's just a storytelling, it's just pictures and stories. Again, my friends, we may not change the world in one day, as the song says, but together we will change the story of the world in one minute by simply changing the storyline. My friends, may I, may I ask everybody to please read this little poem aloud. Read it with me. Above the wild dreams, the raging, the raging rain, rain, and the, the black clouds, clouds of the day's crisis of life, is the, is the golden sun. Hope. Hope, my friends, stands for a simple acronym to heal our planet Earth. And together, my friends, as a family, you Indonesians are some of the best singers of the world. Also our friends from Malaysia. And of course, the Filipinos, we have music in our DNA. And now together as a family, we will sing. And do not be shy to sing. You can put your, your speakers on mute. So you will, you will be the only audience. You will be your only audience and you won't be shy. And speak and singing, after all, is nothing more than speaking aloud. And you can add a little music if you want. There is a nice saying, just dance as if no one is watching. Love as if you have never been hurt. And sing as if no one is listening, because everybody is going to be on mute. But please sing with your, do not sing with your mouth, do not sing with your throat, sing with your heart. Because when your heart, when your heart sings the song, you will never, never, Go wrong. Begin the song, please. Stop screen. Okay. What a wonderful
what a wonderful world it is and a wonderful storytelling you gave us, Attorney Oposa. At this juncture, we would like to entertain now questions from all the participants. You may put your questions in the chat box or wish to put on your camera and your microphone, simply raise your hand or chat with me and I will acknowledge uh, who you would, uh, who this may be. All right, can we have, we would like to entertain at least three questions. Can we have questions from Malaysia? Anyone? You may type them now or you may uh, raise your hand. Meanwhile, I guess uh, we have one question here. They were saying that attorney Oposa, if the Oposa doctrine is responsible for the cleanup of Manila Bay, may we know your thoughts about the Dolomite sands which were placed in Manila Bay? Attorney Oposa? Thank you. But I said, I have, uh, I never think, I just do things. And when I have nothing to say, I say nothing. Oh, that says a lot, actually. When you when you say you don't want much, actually, it is a very powerful. Anyway, okay. Any other questions uh, from the floor? Uh, we would like to enter they now entertain them now. Okay. Earlier, Attorney Oposa, you were. Um, showing some good stories and you were trying to mainstream these good stories but i was wondering or the participant is wondering now how is this possible when the news priorities are about conflict politics and business how can we tell the good stories how can this be possibly be done sir tony that's a very good question uh, because this is called the negativity bias of people we like to hear the negative of other people and that is what media sometimes people call that media is the plural of mediocre media makes money from mankind's misery that is why that film that you saw it is making us feel depressed stressed helpless and hopeless no we are not hopeless the good thing now is that we have an alternative media this media that you're talking to we just begin to change the storyline. And you ask me for what, how we will do with media, how we will do with the TV and with the newspapers to just spread negative energy. I don't watch news anymore. There's nothing there that will affect my life anyway. I just get irritated by the theft of our government officials, some of our government officials, and by the bad news. Precisely that is the point of the Good Stories movement. We change the storyline. And if that newspaper or TV and radio makes you feel depressed, turn it off. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tony Opos. All right, I would just like to read a comment here from Elizabeth or Urgel, or I hope I pronounced it correctly. He said it was a splendid presentation, Attorney Oposa. It was very creative and inspiring. Well, uh, Rich's point that uh, we have to conclude the first uh, part of uh, the first keynote speaker's uh, presentation. And I would like to switch you back uh, to Michelle Bautista, who has more to say about uh, what will happen next. Mitch? Thank you, Attorney Antonio Oposa Jr. and Professor Florides Aban. It is an honor to present our certificate of appreciation to Attorney Antonio Oposa Jr. She reads, allow me to read it. This certificate of appreciation is awarded to attorney Antonio A. Oposa Jr. for delivering the keynote speech, the good stories movement to care, protect, and restore the life sources at the fifth SIMPI, Sustainability Initiatives, Case Studies in Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia Conference held on October 29, 2020 with the theme, Respecting Environment and Diversity, Developments in Current Times. Given this 25th day of October 2020 at Far Eastern University, Manila, signed Dr. Mirna P. Quinto, Vice President for Academic Development, Dr. Maria Teresa Trinidad Piquinio, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Michael M. Alba, PhD, President, 
please receive our certificate of uh, our token of appreciation, Attorney Oposa. Thank you very much. At this well, moment, thank you, thank you very much, to Attorney Oposa. At this moment, please welcome again Professor Flordelis Abanto to introduce our second keynote speaker. Thank you very much, Mitch. Our second keynote speaker who will share about inclusivity in the workplace, a gender responsive planning and development is a professor and a professional lecturer, a doctor of social development and masters in community development programs of the College of Social Work and Community Development of the University of the Philippines. She has held several administrative positions in the state university starting with being the department chair, the director of UP Dilman's Office of Research Coordination, the dean of the College of Social Work and Community Development, and later on, she became the vice chancellor for academic affairs. Beyond the university's organization, she served as the executive director of the Philippine Social Science Council for six years. All of her degrees in, in the field of psychology were earned from the University of the Philippines. She started teaching psychology